Hello and welcome to a brand new season of this FM21 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. We're back for part 85 with a transfer special and a curtain raiser for the season in England. We're back in the Champions League, we've fought hard to get there. We've got a Premier League title to defend and we've got a lot of bottle jobs to sort out in the other areas. So if you're looking forward to all of that and finding out what our director of football's done this summer, please do put a thumbs up on the video. There's a few side plots from this Chelsea game today as well, which we'll get to later on. And of course, we've still got international honours from the Gold Cup that are worrying us and that broken leg to Aaron Smith. There's problems at left back too. We'll get to them in a moment. If you want to stay up to date with the season and find out how we get on in our defence of the Premier League title, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on for daily FM21 content. You can catch up with all the playlists, including the experiment in the eye above, and a massive thank you for your incredible support. Let's go and have a look at what's been going on this summer. We'll start with a transfer special. So I think it would be fair to say, going back to the end of last season, that the transfer window started in style. Immediately after the window opened, there were bids for a player who had transfer listed by request, and that was Mohamed Kamara. Came in last summer, didn't have a great year, but they doubled the money on him, so you've got to say it's a good move. He's gone to Wolves for £26.5 million. He'll be a good squad player there, it will do a job for them. He wasn't great for us in truth. He came in, got that big injury immediately, and never bounced back. So it's a really good deal from the director of football, and fair play to him for making a profit. One of the youngsters, Sean Wallace, was sold to Newcastle for 900 grand. I actually thought mentally he was going to become a very good midfielder, but he didn't have the high technical attributes and he didn't have that potential technically. So perhaps it's the right deal and hopefully there's a juicy sell on as well. And then another one who barely featured last year, Joe Willock, was sold on to Celtic. 11.25 million for him. He was a versatile player, so it will be a loss, but he spent so much of last season injured or unavailable or unhappy that it wasn't really worth his while being here. So I completely understand the fact that he was sold. Now, after losing three centre midfielders like that, two of whom from the first team, you of course want a replacement. After a couple of youngsters came in, Wayne Breeze from Humble Lions, who is a Jamaican striker, and Daryl Colbran, who is a young midfielder from Watford who wasn't very good, £75 million was spent on Simone Scotter from AC Milan. He is a wonder kid a centre midfielder. Four-star ability, five-star potential. Natural in centre midfield, natural in the number 10 role. Fabulous player. Brilliant physically, good mentally, excellent technically. Already an Italian international, have played loads of games for Milan. And he is going to be an absolute superstar. We'll have to give him a few months to settle in. We're aware of that. But he's going to be a very special talent. And with people like Ryan Wright unavailable today, might get his chance earlier than he thought. So massive money, but a fantastic signing. The problem we had, though, as we get into the rest of the summer, is some of the players we've lost haven't yet been replaced. And one of the signings really doesn't make sense. So let's go through the rest of the outs first. Jeremy Bogart, we expected him to go, didn't really feature much towards the end. Now 32 years of age, he's gone for 15 million to Real Betis. It's a good deal. He was a fantastic player for us. He scored some big goals. He scored some important goals. But he wasn't going to be involved much. So it made sense. It was a good sale. And we were happy enough with that. Another youngster went to Newcastle for a million pound. Barbados striker Randy Chandler. Two goals in two for his nation. But not good enough for us in truth. The next one is the one that's thrown me a bit. Because Nuno Mendes, our backup left back, has been sold for £30 million to Manchester City. Could rise to nearly 40. Good deal. We're happy with that. However, he is a backup for Aaron Smith who on the final weeks of last season had broken his leg and was going to be out until about October. He's been sold. He hasn't been replaced. So we now have no left back. Not the best start to the season. But a very solid player. He's gone to one of our rivals who were struggling and he's now going to be first choice there. So I wonder if Manchester City will have a bit of a resurgence this year. We'll wait and see. A few other youngsters went out. I guess the pick of the bunch from the rest is Gabriel Debra. He was a 24-year-old attacking midfielder with two-star ability. He's gone to Anderlecht for a couple of million quid. So the director of football cashing in on squad players. The way he's replaced them, though, is a little bit bizarre. Of course, we got the centre midfielder we needed. We've got a few more of these youngsters in. So Matt Adams, a young left winger. Hugh Diaz, a young centre half. And Josh Durkin, another young centre half. The big signing was Jonathan Okone. He's come in from Borussia Mönchengladbach for 31 million. He's a right winger inside forward, can also play number 10. 
basically comes in to replace the two loanies of last year. So Santa Maria and Marchand, who were backups. Now we've got Jonathan Okone. But that money for a 31-year-old, it is a little bit bizarre, the amount they're investing in older players. But either way, he's a very good player. And he'll be a key part of our squad moving forward. Got loads of experience in the Bundesliga and in Ligue 1. And I'm sure he'll be a star for us when he's called upon. The problem is, though, the last 40 million of our budget, rather than being spent on a left back or a centre half, who he did try to sign in fairness, his first offer of the summer, if you excuse the keyboard, was Eric Garcia. Now, the subplot to that is Eric Garcia went to Chelsea, who we're facing today. He would have been a brilliant signing, but instead had chosen to join our London rivals. And that's not all. In the last week before the season, he made an offer for a left back. That left back was Ricardo Fonseca, who chose to go to Chelsea instead. Now with those two signings, I think we compete for the title again. As it is, we've now got an ageing back line with no left back. And due to the last signing we're about to meet, a plethora of right wingers we don't really need. So the last signing not only was an expensive waste of money for a position we didn't need, is also a player who doesn't suit our tactic. Jamie Cobos from Villarreal, £38 million. Now, he's a brilliant player, let me say that. He's a 19-year-old wonder kid, two and a half star ability, four and a half potential. Great on the ball, great footwork, great physicality, really good mentally as well. I have no doubt he'll become a superstar. But he's a natural winger on the right, doesn't suit the way we play at all, and it isn't a position we needed. We just signed a Konate, we've still got Joel Santos. I don't really get it. So we've got loads of midfielders in the squad, loads of high quality ones. And not really any defenders. So we're in a little spot of bother there. And because of the amount of money spent on that deal, there's only actually £30 million left in the transfer budget. And that's not enough to get the two players we need. So if we go and have a look at the squad, we've actually got a little bit of an imbalance now. What that does mean is in the development centre, we're going to have to promote Richard Bentil for a few weeks. He's a two-star ability left back and he's just going to have to come up and be involved. Hopefully, it'll go from strength to strength with that because he has got a good personality. But it's not an ideal start to the season. If we have a look at the squad though, my main worry is actually centre-half long-term. Because at left-back, although it's not ideal for a few weeks, James Justin can go in and cover there. He's a solid player out there. He'll do a job with two-and-a-half-star ability. And there's a chance for the Luton legend to continue to do well for us. We've still got Cena at right-back. He's transfer-listed by request, but hasn't gone anywhere just yet. He rejected a move away to Bayer Leverkusen, I think it was. And he's still here as a result. We've still got D'Onofrio as a backup. We've still kept most of the other players there. Soden another one. So the squad is pretty deep, particularly in attacking areas. But at the back, we're now relying on 33-year-old Kagla Siunchu, who is just starting to decline physically. And also 34-year-old Clement Longley, who is starting to decline physically. So although Matthias Lamonaco is getting a little bit better, although he may well step into one of those positions... Is not an area we could really afford to not improve and still try and win the league. I know it was a one-off and it was a low points finish and Manchester United handed it to us. But I really thought with a good summer we might have a good go at defending it. And I think there's no chance now. So the focus has to be on the Cups. It has to be on making sure we don't have a trophyless season. In terms of big jobs, it was the quietest summer I've ever seen. The Real Madrid job didn't come up in the end. None of the jobs with the five-star worldwide clubs has come up at all. None of the four and a half star jobs came up. The Leon job was the biggest job that came up all summer and they dropped to four star due to the way they finished in France. None of the massive elite jobs came up and as a result, we have to stay at Spurs for realism. But this season, if we go trophyless, we could get sacked. And I do worry about the strength of the squad. So let me know what you think based on the transfers you've seen. Of course, the fact Chelsea have nicked half of our players and we're playing them today is an issue. You might be asking why, because we beat them to the Premier League title. But Chelsea won the Champions League, so they're a massive draw as a result. Not that that seems to bother them in real life. That's the last dig I'll make about that today. Right, let's go and get into the fixture. It is Tottenham v Chelsea in the Community Shield. I know this won't count as an official trophy, but it would be nice to try and compete for it. But I think Chelsea have got the strongest squad in the country now. So let's go and get into it and see the 11 for today. A few players injured, a few on international duty. But let's see what our assistant recommends, shall we? So a few adjustments to the bench just to try and get a few of the younger players in and a couple of the new signings. I really think that we might have to consider putting Jamie Cobos out for loan. Because I know we've mentioned that we don't do anything in terms of transfers or contracts in this save. But we don't want young players rotting. 
So we've always said that we'll put them on the loan list just so the director of football offers them out. But I really do worry about how he fits in the squad. And when you look at the balance of the bench today, the fact that Bentil's having to go there from the 19s, got two pretty inexperienced centre midfielders, albeit with Ryan Wright on international duty. I do think, did you not see there were areas that needed improving more? As it is though, this is the lineup we've gone for. So Scotter will make his debut in the number 10. We've brought Le Monaco in for Longley, both to protect Longley and to try and get a bit of experience into Le Monaco, a bit more first team football and hopefully make him a better player so he can take over earlier in the season. Overall though, we have to remember it's still a good side. So we've got Loic Willems in goal, James Justin covering at left back with Sailmakers over on the right, Siyunchu and Le Monaco at centre half. Reina and Montalvao in the middle, Scott up making his debut in the number 10, and he yielded and Santos either side of Perea, who needs to have a big season up front. Perea's had some injuries in pre-season, Espinosa's on the bench because he's been out for most of it. So there are some concerns both physically and in terms of ability in the squad. The tactic stays the same, the game plan stays the same, and generally, the ethos has to. My problem is, we're not as strong as we were last season. So let's go and see if that has an impact. Here we go then, Frank Lampard still in charge of Chelsea, they are first team. Miazzi still there up front, we've seen some of the quality in other games against them. Garcia's on the bench, would have been a first teamer for us. They've got Demirel, they've got Reese James as skipper, Odegaard, Donnarumma, it's so good. The left back they nick from us is on international duty with Mexico anyway, so we would have missed him today even if he'd chosen us. But even as Premier League champions, we haven't got the same pull, have we? Let's go and get into the first half, there's a few nervous players there. And there's a few that aren't match fit at all. But it's a showpiece event. It's a curtain raiser for English football this season. It's the Community Shield. Spurs v Chelsea. Can we get on top? Let's go and find out. Well, half an hour gone. We've not seen any highlights until now. As that is off the line. A corner kick headed in. Cleared off the line. Hit a player on the six yard line. And then had to be cleared away again. We've had to drop to a balanced mentality. Because we're being completely outclassed by Chelsea. They've dominated the stats. They've dominated the chances. But most importantly... It's still nil-nil, although Odegaard's got another corner. Left-footed in-swinger. Good header from Le Monaco to Scotter. Gives it away. He took too much time on the ball. You don't get that in English football. As the ball goes over the top, Resch is in. It's a good save from Willems. It has really not been a good display. I don't know if Chelsea are further down the line in their pre-season fitness than us. I don't know if they're just in better shape. I don't know if they're missing less key players. But after half a game, I'm really worried about that. We're going to tell the lads that they've got nothing to lose. I mean, the fact that our assistant is treating this like a sort of big underdogs game is a concern in itself. Though Reina's got a corner and we've got a chance. It's headed away by Gabriel. Look at the counter-attack. We've got a man back on the edge of the box, but he wasn't marking the player who was there. As Odegaard gets out to the right side, a yield is brings him down. It's going to be a penalty kick. I think it's no VAR, so it's going to go straight to the penalty spot. A yield is gets the warning, and unfortunately... We could be one down. Resch is going to step up. Right-footed for Chelsea. We'll go to a positive mentality regardless because we're getting completely outplayed. But if Loic Willems can't save us from the spot, it's going to be 1-0 Chelsea. And it is. We shouldn't have expected anything else. We lost the Europa League final on penalties. We lost the Carabao Cup quarter final on penalties. It's not something we're generally good from. It remains 1-0 to Chelsea. Willems still our best player. And we're going to have to demand more because it's been a poor display. Just over 25 minutes to go. Let's go and make some changes. Of course, you get more subs in this competition. So Espinosa on for a yielders. We will replace Scotter, who's had an average debut, with Ekone as the number 10. He can do pretty much any role there. Prefers the slightly more supporting duty, but we haven't got that luxury. We'll replace the anxious and frustrated midfield too with Esposito and Farrell. And we'll leave the last few a few more minutes. I think Ben Till will get a game. He'll come on for Justin soon. And then we'll make one more a bit later on. So, Ben Till's on at left back. And then is it Perea? He's not been fit most of pre-season. So, let's get Thomas Parks on for him. I think you only get six changes. You do. So, that means that the left centre-half long lay will sit on the bench. As Miazzi's in again. Chance to make it two. Blocked away to Farrell. Then to Esposito. And clear to nobody. If this is a sign of what's to come this season. Of the difference between us and Chelsea. We're in big trouble. A bit like when we played Liverpool and City early last year. We can't compete with these boys when they're at their best. And a lot of them have improved more than us this summer. As Farrell switches the play, gives it straight away to James. And he can play out from the left to Araujo. 
He's got the overlap from the fullback again. Finds Mariba in the middle. And he gives it away to Sailmakers, who gives it away to Miyazi. Chips the keeper and the crossbar, thankfully. We look awful. Really bad. Chelsea's expected goals, two and a half. They have dominated this football match. We've conceded silly chances. We've not really competed. We've not looked like scoring. Though Akone, the new boy, tries to change that. Goes through alone. Forces a great save from Donnarumma. But that's a one-player moment of magic. It's not a sustained period of pressure. The corner's headed away as far as La Monaco. If we can nick a penalty shootout from this, I tell you what, we're getting away with murder. Because we have not deserved it. Le Monaco into Siunchu, to Esposito, to Parks. It's a nice move this for the first time after 86 minutes. Farrell finds a Coney to Espinosa. Bentil's overlapping the youngster and he's easily challenged. It's out for a throw on the right hand side. And it's been a pretty poor display from Tottenham. Toothless, no real ability going forward. And we never ever look like threatening Chelsea. It's a comfortable victory at Wembley for our London rivals. And to be fair, they won the Champions League. They took it to the final day in the Premier League. And if they have anything near their best this season, they will beat us to the title. So that shows you how hard the Premier League defence is going to be and how bad our defence is and how hard we've been hit by the injuries and by the players not being replaced. We've got an ageing squad back there and we've not got anyone to compete. And I fear this is going to be a difficult season. We have to target the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup. If we don't win one of those, I don't see us winning a trophy. Perhaps we could go out the Champions League, compete in the Europa League, I don't know. But not a good start to the season. Not really any positive or promising signs. The boys are motivated as we try and get them G'd up for the season. But there's a lot of work to do. It's back to the drawing board and our director of football desperately needs to get us a defender. But what quality is he going to get for £30 million? I guess we'll have to wait and see. As we get through the tunnel interview, it is victory for Chelsea at Wembley. It is another cup final defeat for Tottenham Hotspur. And really, there are so many alarming signs there. We start the season against Bournemouth next time. We'll try and get through the first few games, of course. But we desperately need help. We need defensive support. We've still got a good few weeks without Aaron Smith. Four weeks to two months he's going to be out for. And even then... From a broken leg, from no pre-season, it's going to take him three or four weeks to get to fitness. With the Champions League, we're going to have two big games every single week. And at centre-half, we've got a 33 and a 34-year-old. Are we really going to be able to play them every week and expect a good result? I'm not quite sure. The positive, I guess, for the club is that the first three games on paper are a little bit more friendly. Bournemouth, Aston Villa and West Ham. However, once that transfer window closes and we get through to September... Our first two games either side of the international break at Everton and Manchester United. What's more, after the Manchester United game, we'll have our first Champions League match three or four days later. And I really don't think we have the squad to compete at the moment. A lot of work needs to be done. There is still some budget remaining. But the director of football has got to find a steal because we haven't got 60 or 70 million to spend on a big signing. And that's purely because he wasted his money on a right winger we don't need. That's the beauty of the head coach though. So I don't know about you, you can let me know down in the comments, but I think it's going to be really hard to follow up that title success. We've got to compete in a cup and just hope we get a lucky draw. And fingers crossed then, we can get through and win some form of trophy this season. The goal in the Premier League has to be top four. I don't think we're going to win the Premier League and I don't think a top four position is going to be easy. But hopefully two or three of the others have a bad year and we're able to compete. But if you did enjoy this transfer special and the Wembley defeat against Chelsea, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know what you think of the bizarre transfer work. A couple of really good signings, but also a real overload in certain positions and a lack of quality and replacements defensively. I think on a side note, that is part of the problem with this sort of save. They don't look and say, actually, our two centre-halves are 33 and 34. We need to replace them. They look and say, we've sold four midfielders. We need to get a couple in. Rather than actually replacing the areas of the squad we're most in need, it's replacing players like for like. And that's something that can be difficult in the head coach. If you want to stay up to date and find out how we get on this season, whether we get a spectacular end to the transfer window, please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. You'll get alerts as daily videos released from two long-term stories. There's also a link to the Twitch channel in the description below and all the key series in the eye above. A massive thank you for your continued support as we head into our 10th season with Tottenham Hotspur. And don't forget, we'll have our five-year bookmark after this season as well. So a lot to look forward to, a big trophy to defend. We've got to be happy we're here at the start of the 10th season. Don't forget, last year in season 10, we'd never even managed in the Premier League. 
So there are positives to this story as well. But it is going to be a challenge to match what we did last season. And I worry we might end up with our first sacking. A big season to come. A lot of work to do as a tactician. And hopefully we'll prove our worth as a head coach. I'll see you next time to find out if there's any better news on the transfer front. And whether we've been able to compete at the start of the Premier League season. We should be starting our Champions League campaign as well. I'll see you there.